I will maybe share a little bit about like, you know, Fawcett's perspective uh, on this, uh, which I think is pretty aligned with this one. I already told you a little bit about Fawcett's, what Fawcett's doing. I want to show you like um, maybe like uh, three snapshots into our, like into some history in the Fawcett orbit. This is from a 1995 Extropy magazine prediction. Uh, and it's like a few Extropians, uh, including for example, uh, Eric Drexler, like back in the days, uh, who co-founded Foresight, Mark Miller, who's a Foresight senior now, and Nick Sabo, who many people here know from the smart contract world, uh, predicting on different events, including uploaded mines and uploads running a thousand times faster than humans. That was in 1995. Uh, timelines were pretty long for most of them, not for all of them. But you know, people have been like thinking, or at least like, this, the, like debating what would happen in the future like that. Now, they have not just only been debating about it. Like this is like a, a, a snapshot from our 2007 Foresight annual gathering. So again, like 17 years ago, I guess, roughly at this point, uh, we had a session on mind uploading with Todd Hoffman here and like different technological developments here but also uh, uploading really how to do it all the way back then. Like, I think the technology was really lagging behind, I think, the will to actually, like, make this happen. Uh, and then, of course, many people here um, know FHI and uh, Anders Sandberg. He published this uh, really great whole animation roadmap together with Nick Bostrom in 2008. But then, since then, I think, like, really progress has been, or at least, like, interest in that area has been, I guess, a little bit slower, uh, I guess, than some people would have expected. Um, and so, within Foresight, we've been trying to, like, you know, at least like build up with the mechanisms that we have a program that is able to support some of that. We have this virtual seminar series that runs once monthly where people can apply in the field to just stay up to date on progress that is happening uh, in the kind of like ambitious neurotech space. Um, we have fellows that we have supported now for I guess seven years um, and you know with a stronger mentorship network uh, and so forth. Uh, and then uh, we, we have built a tech tree on this. It's currently being updated with a, in a more AI automated version. Uh, but one thing that we'd always want to do is like, well, would it be possible to actually go back to the roadmap and see what progress, the whole animation roadmap, see what progress has happened since then and see if something could usefully be done to speed it up, discover the ethical implications of that, uh, and just like trying to figure out what's happening in that field right now. Anders and I talked about it for a few years, we never got around to it. But then in the meantime, uh, this happened. Um, so I guess this is a metaculous um, graph on first general AI systems being devised, tested and publicly uh, announced and in April, so I guess two years ago now, the community prediction here was like 2044, uh, 20, uh, 54, 45. 50, 45. Okay, thanks guys. Um, uh, so, you know, relatively long. And I guess if you look a little bit uh, earlier, you know, like in April, it was even like 57. So I guess there was a small jump downward. And now scrolling all the way uh, to here, it's 2031, which is like really soon. Uh, and so that was, I think, enough of an incentive for us to actually do the workshop um, on how could hope animation and related technologies, um, you know, what is the status quo in there? Uh, what does it mean for AI alignment? Like, could they actually be usefully um, kind of like employed to help with AI alignment? Uh, and so that's what we did last year. Um, and so we brought a few um, researchers, um, entrepreneurs, uh, and funders in that space to uh, Oxford and had a workshop on it. Um, and it was like the first one, pretty small, uh, but uh, it, like, I think it was like really fruitful because many people I think have had been cooking up individual ideas, projects in that space, but really didn't really have a place to come together. Uh, there was lots of brainstorming uh, that was done, um, but we really like tried to discover like first like, okay, what's really like, what is happening in the field right now? Um, with some very funky talk titles here <laughs> from Anders giving an update on the whole brain emulation roadmap. Um, really thinking about AGI risks and whole brain emulation, like how do they actually relate? Uh, is there, like, would it be just uh, advancing? Like, would it be safety enhancing? Is there a DTD approach to it? Or is it more that we actually like also have other ethical concerns that we need to uh, take into account? Davida mostly focused on like actually like 10 year timelines and what we could do to, uh, to, to speed up uploads within that time frame and so forth. So lots of really interesting um, presentations, including one uh, by Michael, who will be uh, speaking in a second. Um, and then some project uh, kind of like some project generation that came out of it. So people actually had like longer term breakouts um, and there were a few interesting projects that were generated at the workshop, um, including like kind of like an MVP of an, uh, of an emulation and even something on brain computer interfaces for alignment. So lots of really, I think, interesting discussions, but there was just not really very much funding focused on that kind of intersection of neurotech and AI safety. And so um, shortly after the workshop, we spun out um, uh, neurotech um, for AI safety grants. And so they were, pretty kind of like quickly spun up uh, with a kind of like, um, yeah, with the information that we had at the time, but we were 
focusing on like these three areas. So one is really like full on whole brain emulation as a potential safety enhancing technology. One would be lo-fi uploads. So actually like using machine learning to create like lo-fi, like using machine learning to create like really good biological uh, and, and behavior models of, uh, of different organisms and, and seeing if that can at least um, help us with AI alignment to the extent that we can actually control these, uh, uh, these lo-fi uploads better. And then other neuroscience approaches, uh, including um, um, some that uh, many people are working on, um, especially more recently. Um, since then, we've received a ton of applications, uh, but currently we have uh, a price pool of a million dollars per year that is not only for this area, but it's split across security cryptography as well uh, and safe and, multi, um, safe and beneficial multipolar AI scenarios. So it's, that's a bunch of like game theory for AI. Um, so it's a million, uh, it's a million dollars. Um, we have a ton of applications and currently if you are interested in that space and are working on a project, feel free to apply, please do so. But I think one thing that we're really interested in is like actually spinning this out as its own area and actually doing something um, like um, kind of impetus grants inspired for like actually like really fast grants for that specific space uh, in, in, in and of itself. Because like many of the pro individual projects that we're receiving in the applications, they are themselves more than 1 million, which is what we have spread out over three areas. Uh, and so I think it would be really substantial to have an um, incentive that is like large enough to actually make people switch into that area and, uh, and discover uh, if it could be uh, safety enhancing and, and what we could build in that space. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, and uh, we're really trying to spin this out as a new uh, program, please feel free to talk to Neef over here, who's uh, the main person, or, or talk to Hound, uh, who will be her translator. I mean, I'm super excited about this, so please uh, chat. But let's make it happen. I mean, how many people here want this to happen? Are you fascinated? Yeah. And you, and you would get involved, right? What would you do? I mean, you don't have to tell me now, but come find me and talk to me about it because I'm hooked and I want to know. Neef will be around. <laughs> she will sit you down. And then the last thing I want to say on this, which I think has been really nice just to see over the years. Um, last year was 30, uh, 30 people at the workshop. Uh, this year we have a really, really long application and wait list and we're, we're about 60 people now. I think we we'll probably have to uh, cut it out there, but I think this workshop series is now going, going to become more of an annual event where people can like update each other on progress that they're making in that space to really grow gradually more of an ecosystem around these approaches. If you're interested, you are still welcome to apply. Uh, we are pretty full right now. Um, but um, yeah, for other people that are really like interested in like getting more collaboration going in the space, um, we're hopefully doing these uh, on an annual basis now to actually grow more of a uh, like recurring ecosystem. If you want to talk about any of this, please find me. That's all from my end. Um, and I think I was under time, roughly. Uh, but I won't be taking any questions. So we have time for the next presentation.